No role plays, no conference calls, no BS. Chris and Lorenzo share four decades of combined experience to help you become a more effective leader. This is Hacking Your Leadership. Hey everyone, this is Chris. And Lorenzo. And welcome to our Best of Saturday series. Now that we have hundreds of episodes, we get a lot of listeners asking us where to start. So we'll be selecting some of our most popular episodes to share each Saturday from our years of podcasting. We hope you enjoy it. How many emails on average would you say you get per week total? And I don't mean I don't mean like a solicitation, you know, your name got on a list somewhere. I mean where an email was intentionally sent to you by somebody. A, how, how many a day on average you think? Strictly work related yeah, or just work, in work related. Yeah. Um, but but all uh, work but all work streams that you have probably somewhere between thirty to fifty. And how many of those thirty to fifty? What percentage of them would you say are actionable by you? They're not just like oh read and store in the back of your mind, but actually you got to do something. Probably three to five. Three to five. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think your experience is probably pretty average in terms of the percentage of emails that we get that are actionable and the percentage that, that are not. But the bottom line is email takes up a lot of our time. It takes up a lot of our lives. And it's funny because, you know, it, it makes us more productive than not having it. But what did we do with all that time before <laughs> before there was email? <laughs> sure. Um, we talked on an episode probably last year now about the importance of compartmentalizing email communication. I, I know you said that you um, on your phone itself that you don't have you know, audible or, or vibration alerts for email go off on your phone because you don't want to be taken out of, of what you're doing. I do the same thing when my, my email populates when I, when I actually open the program and, and, and refresh it again, then it'll pull through. And, and I really try to do that twice a day and not more than twice a day. Um, and you know, we've discussed this before and the, 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 the idea around making sure that the people who, de who depend on you and, you and who count on you, they, they know that you are dependably reachable, but not so much so that they get the impression that you're at their back, beck and call. And because that'll set a precedent that you're always available and then you don't have a work life balance. And then the, the first time you don't respond after, you know, two hours, then people start wondering what's wrong. And so we, we both agree that kind of that these are important kind of parameters to set in place. What I want to talk about on this episode is how a lot of leaders hurt their own leadership abilities and how people view leaders um, lesser or as, as having low leadership ability when the leader doesn't do the right thing in email. And this can go two different ways. It, we, it can talk, we, they could be not saying the right things. They could also be saying the wrong things. And so what I'm wondering is, do you have a leader that you know of, where either you've reported to them or they're a peer of yours, where you know them personally and you know them to be a good leader, but every time you read an email from them, you're like, Oh, like it's just cringe <laughs> or it's like, I, I need, I need to call that person and we need to talk about this because this is not the impression I get from them when we talk. So we need to work on this email thing. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. Well, it's funny because absolutely. There, there are certain leaders that I've worked with over the years that like email is not a strength. Right. Uh, and, and, and I don't mean that in like, you know, you get those that just don't ever spell check things like, like sure. stuff like that. What, what I see when it comes to email and it kind of makes me laugh a little bit is like the the urgency in what in which is written in an email in a world where email isn't the urgent way to contact somebody <laughs> you, you, you know what i mean like 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 yes. if i re if i read this email I would like, why didn't you call me or text? Like, why didn't you immediately reach out to me based upon how I read this? This seems like the world is on fire right now. Right. Based on how you stated this or, you know, like, it's just, that's how it comes across. And, um, and that's where I think you're spot on. Like, uh, you know, that could cause damage to a leader because one of two things either happens, either people respond you know quickly and urgently to a message like that and then they don't get a response back and then you lose all validity in your urgency of course right or people start to write it off as like oh they this is just how they communicate and then they don't take anything you say seriously um in, in that specific scenario did you but watch yeah. the office did, were you an office fan uh here and there, like i wasn't like a committed watch every episode but there, here and there, there's I saw a, episodes. there's a scene in the office where where michael scott steve carell's character sends out an, an email somebody gets an email marked urgent level three 
and <laughs> and people come running into the office and somebody asks what urgent level three is and then and then it cuts to a scene of just him talking to the camera and he said a while ago i started to notice no one was re reading my emails so i started marking all of them as urgent and then so people started reading them again but then people started stopped reading them because everything was marked urgent so now <laughs> right. i have three different levels of urgent there's urgent urgent level two and urgent level three <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah. it's but you're, you're exactly right that's what happens when you start to when you when you don't use the proper communication methods for what you're trying to convey. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what I that's kind of what I see is that I think that email is one of those like necessary evils because there's many times when, you know, communication has to be sent out and there's, you know, kind of blasts to larger crowds of, you know, uh, of information, of data points, things like that. So like there is a need for email. Um, especially when you you know work in a in a complicated business um, where you've got multiple partners and players and collaborators and you know internal external like that that's the correct way to communicate. I don't want to have people other vendors or contractors have my personal number to call me or text me. Sure. Email is the right way to do that. Um, but from a leadership standpoint, yeah, I think there's a lot that can be learned on how to appropriately utilize the communication platform. Um, in a way that doesn't waste people's time, but also doesn't make you look like a jerk as a leader. Right. If you if you have a relationship with someone where something you could actually solve would, would be where you'd be the right person to reach out to for a really urgent matter, that by definition means you have a relationship with that person enough to where they have your phone number too. You know, they can they can right. call you. If you if a person's only way of reaching you is via email, it's unlikely that anything you could do has that great an impact on the situation at a, a moment's notice. Meaning anything you could do, you could do the next day or later on that day or, or at, a, at a different pace than what that, that emergency could be conveying. Um, the other day, I walked by a person who was um, composing an email and they stopped me and said, hey, would you mind looking this over for me? And I said, okay, yeah, sure, what is it? And, and he said, it's an email. I just, I'm, it's taking me about 30 minutes to write it. And I, I'm like, I heard the 30 minute part. I'm like, Ooh, I, this is going to be a long email. Well, it wasn't a long email. It was, it was two and a half paragraphs, short paragraphs that had taken this person 30 minutes to write. And I thought, well, that's interesting. 30 minutes to write two and a half paragraphs. So I read it over and it was an email on, it, it was giving some feedback. It was, it was being a little bit critical. It's almost like performance management, but it was from a, they, it was not in a reporting relationship. This person was sending an email to a coworker or a peer. It wasn't a, a boss or, or a subordinate. And it was, it was nicely written, but it was, they were trying to get across some criticism or some feedback over how something was done. And halfway through it, I just turned and said, why don't, why don't you just go talk to them? <laughs> and yeah. they said, well, they're not here. They left for the day already. And, you know, I, you know, the, our, I'm in meetings all day tomorrow. And I just, it needs to be said sooner than the next time I'm going to see them. And I thought, okay, I guess that, that kind of makes sense from it, it. That makes sense what they're saying. But when I dig a little deeper, it's, they didn't want to have the conversation in person, right, you know, they, right, they, right. they didn't want to have that uncomfortable conversation. And so that made me think of this, this episode, because I think a lot of the trip ups that, that happen to leaders when it comes to email are in emails, usage of things that it wasn't intended to be used for. And when people start to try to shoehorn these processes that were never meant for email in the first place into email as the tool, because that's just the tool we have. Uh, that's when people can get tripped up by that. So, do, I mean, does that happen to you? Have you ever tried started to write an email and then in the middle of it going, you know what, this isn't an email and you just X out of it and you do it, do it a different way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes out of complete rage and anger, right? Right. Yeah. 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 You start, you know, you get that, that heavy finger on the keys and you uh -huh. start clicking really loud. You're like, wait a minute, if I'm pushing these keys this hard, I probably need to just have this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, or, or like the other thing that I heard in there was like, why is it taking you 30 minutes to write a kind of a short email? Like if you're obsessing over the words, the language, how does it come across? Like if you're worried it's about- It's that one. It's the how right. does it come across? Yeah, exactly. Like if, they were like trying to what... make sure that in the absence of the actual conversation, that the context was there. They wanted to make sure that I read it the way they intended. Right. And so what I'm saying though is that if, if you're pouring that much time into the context of the writing- then chances are not only do you not want to have that conversation with a coworker, but you probably don't have a good enough relationship with them to even shoot off an email like that to begin with. 
right? Because, you know, like that that's the difference between like you and I, where it's like, hey, maybe I saw something that we did around the podcast, or maybe you had an idea, or maybe there was a, you know, a, a, like I think about how we communicate the other day with, uh, you know, we had a, a, a meme go out, right? That right. was <laughs> that was the, the the wrong titled meme with the right episode number. Yes. And we, ca- we caught it early on. Yeah. Uh, but the text message was really short and simple. Wrong meme, fix it, right? Wrong, me- yeah, right. exactly, <laughs> right? Yeah. right? And, and you were like, Man, sorry, like, I'm on it, we fixed it. Like, so you know, it is what it is, everybody makes mistakes, it wasn't intentional. It was you were you were doing a lot of work ahead of time, mm-hmm. and there was just some crossed wires there, but yeah. like, you don't get to have clear, direct communication like that with somebody unless you have a great relationship with them to where you're not taking this personal right. and you're like, God, I wonder what he thinks. No, you're like, oh man, I missed it. My bad. I got it. It's fixed. We're good. Yeah. You know, and so I think that's the other thing to think about when when pouring that much time over writing an email. Sure. I'm sure there are people who you work with where a, the, a similar text message, uh, you know, related to a work related thing, you know, wrong wrong process or you know wrong you did you you did this wrong you know that and that's it nothing nothing else into it where that could come off very differently to the person you sent it to and there are people who report to you who they probably look at that and go yep you're right my bad and they'd move on and it, and it all is about the relationship yeah now now you mentioned kind of like the email not being like intended for this type of use right like do you do you have any other I don't know, like thoughts, of, like what other things do you think of when it comes to like things you shouldn't do through email? Because like now I'm wondering, I'm like, I never thought about it that way. Whining, like whining, whining and good. complaining. Yeah. There, I mean, the whole, the whole point, if a person is saying something over email, it's an email is not a conversation. This whole, I've heard people use these terms. Oh, I had an email conversation with them. No, you didn't. There's no such thing as an email conversation. There, there's an email chain, an email, an email thread. A conversation happens either over the phone. Text message probably works too. And some, sometimes it's the, 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 the medium that you're using has a different context to it when you're talking about a conversation versus over email. And when you have an email back and forth, I don't view that as a conversation. And I think when a, when a person is complaining or whining about something, what they're inherently saying is, I want to make, I want to get this out. And I don't want to be convinced differently. So I'm just, I want to, I want to be the one to say what's wrong with the situation. I want to complain about the situation. If you genuinely have a desire to fix something, then that comes in the form of providing solutions or trying to have a dialogue over why something is the way it is. And that typically doesn't happen over email. You doesn't, you don't solve things that way. So I think, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to be, you know, giving critical feedback to somebody over email. And I feel like you don't, you shouldn't be whining or complaining over email. Those are, those are things that, they allow the person who's reading it to there, there's there's too much wiggle room in terms of how they interpret it that could then hurt your brand with them. Uh, I, I like the idea of being able to see somebody's body language and and their facial expressions when we're talking about something because the the social cues that we all have and that we give off when we're in conversations, I think they're important to making sure we're steering the conversation the right way so that the brand of ourselves that we're trying to put out there is received correctly. Yeah, I like that. And I would add this that there are we mentioned a little bit earlier, but there are things that email is really good for. And, oh, and like of course. I feel I feel like I wouldn't be able to sleep tonight if I didn't mention this because this is the thing that drives me yeah. crazy the most, right? Yeah. Is we know what email is great for is sending me information like keynotes and PowerPoints of things that have information on slides, mm-hmm. speaker notes, you know, things that I can read, you know, take in and then go and either utilize or apply. Um, yes. What's not a good vehicle for communication for that is a conference call or a video conference call where you just read me these things. Right. right, like, 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 it's like actually, email was was created for exactly that thing. It's of course, like, it was. Send me the information. I can read it myself. I can absorb it. If you want to talk about what I got out of it or what the expectations are, then we can have that conversation. But utilizing other things like again, conference calls or video chats to just read me what you can email me, that doesn't make sense at all. So I feel like I need to give some kudos to email. Uh, as we think about when it's right to use and when it's not right to use. Right, right. There's a um. There's a another thing that I think people do that that hurts their leadership ability uh, when when they use email the wrong way, and that's the um, and I've learned I've actually learned this the hard way a couple times where I I regretted sending it a certain way, and that's I asked for somebody's opinion on something, but I didn't give them a deadline, mm. so I I you know I knew something was due or that I was I wanted to make something happen, but I but I really valued their opinion, and so I sent them an email and I said you know would you um, would you mind taking a look at this I'd love to have your opinion. And once I sent the email, I thought, okay, 
if they don't respond back in a timely manner, then I have to move forward. But if I move forward without their opinion after asking for it, it's going to look like I didn't value it or didn't want it to begin with, almost like it was a formality. And I think a lot of people feel the exact same way. It's like once you've once you've served the ball to the other side of the net, you have to wait for that ball to come back. You can't go get the ball back. You know, you have to wait for that person to 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 hit it back to you. And I, I learned a few years ago that the right way to do that is to make sure that what you're asking for has that time limit or that deadline. Hey, here's the presentation I just finished. I'm turning it in on Friday. Um, if you see anything that uh, that that doesn't you know resonate well with you or you think is wrong, let me know. So you've, you've said, this is the deadline. I'm sending it on Friday. So wherever it is that you sent to them, now they know they have a certain number of days. You've set the precedent or set the expectation that you're sending it on Friday. And then if they don't get back to you, it wasn't, it wasn't you just ignoring their potential feedback. It was you saying, hey, you know what? I'm on a timeline here and I want you to be a part of this timeline, but the timeline's not stopping even if you opt out or if you're too busy to give it. And so I think there, that's one example, but there are a lot of times where people use email to kind of pass the ball and and don't realize that it, it's going to trip them up in the long run. Yeah, I think I think it's great because now that you were talking about that, I was laughing to myself of like the amount of times where people will send an email and then send a text message, check your email, right? <laughs> 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 right? <laughs> it's kind of yeah. like, wait a minute. You know, yeah. and, and usually the reason why is because of that. They don't include like kind of the due date or the expected response yeah. time in the email and they say, hey, check your email. I need to know, you know, in the next hour. And it's right. like, well, oh, okay. It's like, if that's the case, again, if you have to send me a text to let me know it's doing an hour, then more than likely email is not the most urgent way to communicate this information because like, you know that I may not check it in the next hour. Exactly. And, and, and again, I think it's important to do. I think there are a lot of people who they check their email way too much. There's there, if, if you have a, a relationship that you set up with your bosses, if you have multiple ones, um, and the people who report to you and your peers, that you are reachable, but it's going to be on a a reasonable timeline that you respond to email once in the morning for whatever happened after you left for the day, and then once in the afternoon, like the last the, the last thirty minutes of your day before you stop working for the day, uh, just to make sure that anything that happened during during the day was addressed. That's a great way of doing it. Tw- two little thirty minute periods during the day where you can kind of go through and, and make sure people understand that you are reachable, that you are working, but that if something is urgent, they've chosen the wrong platform. If they sent you an email at 10 a.m. and they needed a response by 1045 a.m., that's not going to fly. And the moment you show that you respond at 1042 for that 10 o'clock email, what you're telling that person is, oh, the best way to reach Lorenzo when I need something urgent is vi- via email. And it's not something we can maintain forever. It's impossible to maintain forever with every person. And so starting down that road is just gonna gonna hurt you. The people I know who who are in that road on that road, they started when they got three emails a day. And then it was fine. Then it was like, yeah, I'll just I got this now. I'm not doing anything. Let me just respond. But now they're in a situation where they're getting 50 a day. And responding to every email when it comes in means they're not actually being leaders anymore to the people who depend on them for FaceTime and to be there. They're they're almost being managers or, or, or administrators uh, as opposed to actually leading people. Yep, completely agree. And with that, it brings us to this episode's One Minute Hack. The One Minute Hack. All right, for this episode's One Minute Hack, we're going to reference an article by Michael Hyatt, who's an author and a fellow podcaster who has another iTunes top 10 management and leadership podcast. Um, This article is from three years ago, but it is very relevant to what we're talking about today. It's called Three Ways Email Can Sabotage Your Leadership, and we will link to it in the podcast description. The three ways that email can sabotage your relationship is if you use it to criticize something, to complain about something, or to deliver bad news. If you're writing an email and you want to make sure that that email doesn't hurt your leadership um, brand with your peers, coworkers, and bosses, you need to make sure that the email you're writing doesn't fall into one of those categories. It shouldn't be critical. It shouldn't be to complain about something, and it shouldn't be to deliver bad news. When you're writing that email, make sure that nothing in that language that you're about to send to somebody can can fall into one of those three categories. Read the article. Keep it next to you if you have to when you're writing emails, because if you're one of the people who does these things regularly, you're hurting your leadership brand. Yeah, what I love about that article as well is where he says, you know, email is excellent when it comes to informing, explaining, or even praising. 
But if it's not one of those, we should meet face to face if possible. So uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that as well, and think it's a great resource for uh, for myself as a reflection point and other leaders that are out there. Yeah, it's an it's an easy one to forget, and I think there um, I can speak for myself and for a lot of people I know who I th- I think are good leaders. Um, it, we need the reminder sometimes because email can get the better of us. We can get passionate. We can do those those hard keystrokes when we're really passionate or or you know intense about something. Um, that means it's time to slow down and make sure that you're not doing one of these three things. Yep. And with that, it brings us to the end of this episode. 